So you say, Hashem, bring me back to your Torah. What is he going to say? Bring yourself back to my Torah. What do you want from me? You have free will. Go and do it. Return us, our Father, to your Torah. We're asking Hashem to return us, meaning to help us to move our lives into conformity with the Torah. But Rav Schwab asks the Ban Kasha, he asks a very powerful question. Wait a minute. In whose hands is it that I return to Hashem? In whose hands is it that I live in conformity to His will, that I follow His precepts? It's in my hands. So you can say, Hashem, bring me back to your Torah. What is he going to say? Bring yourself back to my Torah. What do you want from me? You have free will. Go and do it. Not only that, but actually God does say that. In case you thought I was joking. Shuvu Eli, return to me. Ve'ashuva Aleichem. And then I will return to you. So we have to first take the first step and then he'll come to us. Well, but what do we say? That's what Hashem says. But what do we say? We, we're saying in this bracha. Hashivenu Avinu Zarazach. You return us to your Torah. But in case you thought, okay, but... You know, maybe the rabbis got it wrong in the bracha, but that's a pasuk. And we say it every Shabbos when we put away the Torah. We say, Hashivenu Hashem Eilacha. It's a verse in Eicha, written by none other than Yirmiyahu. Hashivenu Hashem Eilacha. Return us to you, Hashem. Vin Nashuva, and we will return. Hashem says, you return to me, Shuvu Eilaiva Ashuva Eilachem, and I will return to you. And we're like, no, 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 no. Hashivenu Hashem Elacha, you return us to you. You act vinashuva, and then we'll return. But Hashem does and should say to us, but that's on you. That's for you to do. Why are we asking Hashem to do something that's our responsibility to do? And that's just our responsibility, but that is our free will. How are we saying this when Hashem is in the Pasuk openly? He is saying, hey, you come to me and then... I'll come to you. It's conflicting. So what's going on over here? We need help. Yes. Yes. Yes, exactly. We need help. And every undertaking that I, that I do, I ask Hashem for help because I recognize that I can't do it alone. Of course I have to want it. And of course I have to make an effort. But I also acknowledge that my effort is meaningless and worthless unless and until... Hashem brings my efforts to fruition. He carries me through to the other side. It doesn't mean I sit back on my laurels and I say, Hashem, you do everything. Of course I'm going to do what's in my power to do. But Hashem, without you, it's not going to go. It's just not going to go. I was reading recently in a book called Chinuch in Turbulent Times. And anyone who follows me on Facebook sees I post a lot of quotes from this book. But uh, one of the things he talks about teaching children, but he says... He had to teach himself this, the author, Rabbi um, Brizek. And it's, he said it made a tremendous difference in his life. Is no matter what we want, even the smallest thing, and that no matter when it is, at any time, we should be always sort of mumbling to ourselves before we do anything. You know, Hashem, please help me to be successful in this mundane thing, whatever it is. You're going to... Make an omelet. You want it to come out good. Mm-hmm. Hashem, please help me to make a delicious omelet. And that, you don't have to stand in Shemona Esri. Just talk to God anywhere that you are <coughs> about anything. It imbues within, instills within the person an awareness of Hashem constantly. That Hashem is always there. He's always helping us. He always can help us, will help us. And he says, you know, and it also makes a difference because when you ask Hashem for help, he helps. Reaching out to Hashem is the very first step of our required effort. The answer to the question of how is it Hashem says, you return to me. And then I will uh, return to you. And we say, Hashem, return us to you. I saw something beautiful in a sefer called Eim HaBanim Samecha by uh, Rabbi Teichtal, who wrote, he wrote this book in hiding from the Nazis during World War II. And it's a phenomenal, beautiful, very inspiring book where he said he didn't have access to any svarim in writing his book. And everything is from memory because he was like hiding in an attic somewhere, you know? And it's, and it's incredible, the, 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 scholar, the scholarship, the erudition, is so many sources. 
And many, but many times says, you know, I'm saying this from my memory. I don't have, I don't have, I don't have the, the sources in front of me. You know, like in case I'm getting it wrong. Mm-hmm. But I mean, it's just full of quotations. And anyway, he, he addresses this contradiction in the book. Hashem is saying, "Return to me, and I'll return to you." We're saying, "Hashem, you return us to you, and then we'll return." It means that it has to be at the same time. That's what it means. It has to be at the same time. We need to return to Hashem at the same moment that He is returning us. But how can we possibly know when Hashem is doing that in order that we should do it? In other words, I have to make these things happen together because Hashem is saying, you do this. And, and this other, your Miho, the Navi, is saying, you, Hashem, return us. But how do I know when Hashem is, is taking that step for me to know, for me to take my step? He says, there is no way to know. But Hashem knows when we're taking our step. So whenever we take a step, Hashem will step simultaneously with us. That's what it means. Because we can't anticipate when Hashem will step, but Hashem knows the moment we'll step. He is able to make it happen. So we don't have to worry. We take a step and it will be simultaneous. When we make the effort to return to Hashem, Hashem is already at that moment simultaneously bringing us close to Him. Hashem, please help me to make a delicious omelet.